Good morning, 17th of July today. Uh, it's still early in the morning, just on seven o'clock. Uh, it's nice and quiet down here and I'm not expecting visitors until later on. Um, basically in the last couple of weeks, it's, a, it's two weeks since I did a post on my own garden. We visited Peter's and we've seen some superb plants. Uh, I've seen a few superb plants in other people's gardens, but the hot egg stories are starting to come out, uh, both in my own garden and in other people's. So I'm going to cover a few of the problems today. We had a talk in on the 7th of uh, July and it was very successful. Over 50 people attended. Uh, we got through a lot of very good business. I put a small presentation on uh, about stress and plants, lighting and plants, what the weather, how the weather affects plants. And we also had Clive Pearson who gave us a talk on biology, which was very good. Uh, from After that, we discussed uh, a few things. We discussed the new CIU judging rules. Uh, we discussed stem phyllium on plants, which I'll show you all about this morning. And we discussed leaf miner on plants, which are recent problems that are occurring throughout the British Isles. Uh, but we'll cover a little bit this morning. Um, I will take the, the, pic the camera off the holster in a moment, and I'll show you a few slides that I've managed to pull together. I've got one or two issues on my plants, which I'll show you, and um, we'll redress it. Um, a lot of people are phoning up, when should I start shaving my heads? Any time in the next couple of weeks you can start, and I usually do, you know, each week I do a few heads, so I haven't got all my heads coming together. So I will show you this morning how to do at least one, we'll look at that. We'll look at how the onion stock's coming on, tomatoes will start to improve, and um, they've had a feed and it's made a big difference. Um, I've bared a blanched leaf down, we'll take a look at the onions, and I've bared a couple of pot leaks down, we'll take a look at those as well. Right, we'll cover the stem phyllium first. Um, I'll show you what stem phyllium is. I don't think you can see on that slide. This is a foliage on a leaf, uh, on the, uh, the leaks, and stem phyllium is this white blotching. It's called stem phyllium leaf blotch, it's known as bleach burn. And it usually starts off with a tiny little spot, just like this. And it elongates, gets bigger, until eventually it covers the entire leak. This was in someone else's garden. Now, just let me explain what stem phyllium is. Uh, you can see there, but stem phyllium is small spores. It's very much, it is a form of botrytis. And as we can see here, the little black spores appearing. Turn into little postules like this. This is another shot from a different angle. But just to show you what stem phyllium is and how it grows. It's very much like a, a rust disease. So let's first talk about it. Stem phyllium leaf blotch. Uh, it is a form of botrytis. Uh, it, it's a recent introduction into this country. It's been here maybe 10 or 12 years, but it's just in the last five or six years it's really come to the forefront. And now it's actually wiping whole allotment sites out. So we need to be on, on the ball about this. Uh, light, warm, humid conditions, 18 to 28 degrees, which is perfect what we're getting at the moment. The humidity is very high at the moment, so it suits this disease and it, it does spread rapidly. Uh, it has airborne postules and spores. Uh, it's carried by the wind. It starts as a tiny dot where the spore contacts the leaf and then this elongates rapidly as we've seen by the, this first picture that I showed. The spore is known as canida or canidium, and it is produced asexually. That means that it can reproduce itself without having a male or a female. It's asexual, so it can reproduce itself very rapidly. Insect damage can spread the fungal disease, uh, especially leaf miner, which I'll come on to in a moment. Um, once you have this, I'm trying to you try different sprays to try and control it. I have managed to get it under control. I'll show you some on some plants. I've only got maybe on two or three plants uh, out of maybe 80 that I've got planted. But I don't want it to spread. But having said that, I do want to learn something from it. So I'm leaving it at the moment. I know other people who've actually dug their plants up and burnt them. Burn affected plants. Um, certainly don't overcrowd it. It's caused through overcrowding. You need better air circulation. So plenty of air circulation. Avoid overfeeding with nitrogen because this enables the spore to enter very rapidly. Uh, fungicide spray with Mancozeb or Trichoderma. Uh, Amistar was used on stem phyllium uh, in asparagus. 
about 10 years ago and it was successful so Ami store is uh, quite a favourable one uh, obviously whatever fungicide you can get your hands on basically whenever I've looked into this uh, the ecosystem always comes into it uh, we're told to add microorganisms to increase good biology and good soil structure um, <clears throat> not overfeeding <coughs> overfeeding won't help with the disease so as I say it is a major problem uh, try and get some army store or whatever fungicide you can get your hand on and spray on a regular basis. I have got friends who've put neem oil over the top of the um, spores to try and stop them from growing and uh, spreading onto other plants. And the neem oil has checked it, it stopped it from, it's still spreading within the one plant, but it's not spreading onto others. Now we mentioned leaf miner. Um, first off, leaf miner is a fly, not as big as this, thankfully. It's a very small fly. It does come around in March, in April. There's its first clutch of eggs. And then it does come back again as it matures throughout the summer. It does come back again in September. Uh, I'll show you some more slides first. When leaf miner attack first starts, if you can see by this, this is the leaf of an onion. And you can see the little marks that it's put all the way down. This is where it's laying its eggs feeding on the plant, laying its eggs within the leaf. So that's the first sign of having leaf miner. Moving on. These are leeks that are commercially grown. The bottom one, I'll turn it that way because that's a leek growing up. This is the roots at the bottom. The leaf miner has laid its eggs up in the leaf. The little grub burrows its way down the plant. And you can see that's the bug there, it's inside. It's coming all the way down, goes right down to the base, another one there, and a couple of dots here, and then it usually feeds around the base and rots your plant, and you can rapidly lose it. That's some more, which you can see. So you can see the marks going down the plant, but once they get in, they do annihilate your plants, and I know a couple of lads, a couple of very good growers, Nick Ruddy's one, he's been wiped out completely, all his stock plants, uh, all his exhibition plants, uh, and he... He actually attended the meeting last week and he brought a small jar with the grub in them. He'd been around the base, this is the grub. And he had a jar full of these. They're just very small grubs around the base. These pupate throughout the year and they hatch out again around about August, late August time into September. And then we get a second wave which overwinters in the plant and that's when it starts again in the spring. So let me read a little bit about it. Allium leaf miner. Um, this has fast become a serious pest affecting all alliums, all of the onion family and leeks. It is primarily a problem within leeks as its preferred host, but it will go for onions, garlic, chives and shallots. It can be devastating to the crop and aluminium leaf miner actually became number seven in the RHS top 10 list of pests around 2015. Allium leaf miner was first noticed in Poland going back to the mid 1800s. It's only recent times that has become a significant pest uh, and only reached our shores around um, 2002. So it, it has been in the country. I first seen it down at John Brannan's uh, about five years ago and some onion plants that he had and it devastated the plants. Uh, it slowly worked its way up north and uh, it's now affecting around the northeast uh, which is a hotbed for leek growers. Uh, initially it was in a garden and allotment, it was a, just a garden and allotment pest in Britain but now it has become a problem for commercial growers. According to the RHS there are no chemical controls currently approved for its control available to home growers. Obviously commercial growers can obtain certain chemicals but uh, the home grower can't. And what I will say is DEFRA are very hot on the tail uh, of illegal uses of um, chemicals, so be very careful what you're doing out there. Um, Deris or pyrethrin were mentioned as controls in 2007, uh, that's by Ferrer, but Deris is now delisted. However, both Deris and pyrethrins are unlikely to be effective due to the life cycle of the pest. So obviously farmers have got a problem. How to rid leaf miners? Um, search for what is the best treatment for leaf miners. What do you spray on leaf miners? If you notice leaf miner damage on your foliage, thoroughly apply Spinosad, Monterey Garden Insect Spray. This is available on the internet. 
Uh, I'm not sure if it's one of the legal ones or if it's sold on the counter again, I don't know. But it is on the internet. Monterey. Uh, and it's spray this on all plant services. Once ingested, spinistad stops the larvae from feeding and they will die within 24 to 48 hours. Uh, how to control leaf, mi leaf miner. Again, bio biocontrols are beneficial. So basically they're telling you biology again because good bacteria will help to control this. Search for what do you spray on leaf miners? What do all your leaf, leaf miner look like? We've shown you that. Where did the leaf miner originate? We know. Um, how do we re remove leaf miner leaves? Uh, basically, uh, another friend of mine phoned on Friday evening. He found some in some uh, plants of his and he dug four straight out and binned them. And I said, look, try not to lose all your stock. Go into your stock, strip some foliage off. They usually go in the first four, possibly five flags of the plant. Strip these off. You will find the little bugs and eradicate them uh, just by, you know, crushing them or um, burning them, whatever. It's the best way just to kill them. He did that and he phoned me back. He said, John, that's great. I have stripped the leaves off. Uh, you could definitely see the marks where they burrowed down through the actual, um, down the, the barrel of the plant. They were in around the base, feeding around the base. He says, I think I've got all of them. He'd washed his plants down with GS fluid and the remaining plant was nice and clean and healthy and at least it saved his plants. Um, so he, he did get them. He said he got quite a few out. Um, you know, there were uh, as many as six or seven around the base of each plant, but he checked a few plants and he, did, he got them all off. So by stripping a little bit of foliage off, you should be able to find the bug and get rid of it. While we're inside, because I am going to go out and show you, um, we finally finished our North East Horticultural Show uh, schedule. I will show you this. Hopefully this is the front page. I hope you can all see that. Stop your cameras and have a good look. The date is the benching on the 9th and the show will be open on the 10th of September at the Louisia Centre in Stanley and the postcode and everything's on there. Show rules. Again, I'm here to be read, but I can send this out if anyone would like a copy, either contact me or we can send it by email. If you send me your email, I will send you a schedule out. Right. First section is the leak section. Uh, we've had some sponsors in for this. Uh, two pot leaks judged under NPLS rules. This is sponsored by Greenfingers Garden Centre and the first prize is £500. Second prize 150, third prize 100, fourth prize 50, and their prize is down to 10th place. Class 2 pot leaks, I have sponsored this class. First prize, this is judging the CIU rules, and the first prize here is 500, second 150, third 100, fourth 50, and again, prize is down to 10th place. Uh, Blanche leak class is 75, intermediate class is 75, one pot leak one intermediate and one blanched leak, a three leak class, again 75. One super pot leak, 15 pound. This is the first prizes only. I hope you can see this, lads. Turning over, moving on to the veg section. I hope you can see it. Uh, excellent classes and excellent prize money. Collection of six veg, 50 pound, 30 pound and 20 pound. Mini collection of five kinds of veg, 30 pounds, 20 pounds, and 10 pounds. A collection of four veg, uh, 25, 15, and 10. Three large dressed onions, 20, 15, and 10. Three dressed onions under one and a half kilogram, 20, 15, and 10. Five dressed onions, first prize 20. Uh, this is under 250 gram, that's the small ones. 20 pound, 15, and 10. And the onion championship, five large dressed onions, 50 pound, 30 pound, and 20 pound. On the opposite side, if you can see this, I think, uh, three long carrots, three stump carrots, three parsnip, British potato championship, uh, white and colored, nine tomatoes, two celery, two cauliflowers, uh, beetroot one dish of three, a dish of six peas, and a dish of shallots, a dish of 12. Good prize money, it's all £20, £15 and £10. Uh, some The British Potato Championship is £30, £20 and £10. Uh, tomatoes and everything down over is £15, £10 and 5 
Turning over to the heavy veg section. Uh, we have the heaviest onion, 300 pound. I hope you can see this. Uh, 300 pound, 100 pound and 50 pound. Heaviest leek, 100 pound, 30 and 15. This is sponsored by, the onions are sponsored by Beverage Nursery and Leadgate CIU are sponsoring the heaviest leek. We have a heavy marrow, heavy cabbage, heavy tomato and a longest cucumber, all 20, 15 and 10. Moving on to the floral section, uh, we have a great floral section. We've got some really good growers who come to exhibit here. Uh, we have um, most of, the, well, I'll go through. Vars of Gladioli, three stems, 15, 10 and 5. Dahlias, um, five vases are 30, 15 and 10. And then the single vases are all 15, 10 and 5 pound prize money. And we go through the classes, one vase of giant, um, well, three blooms per vase can be shown in separate vases because of the size. Um, three decorative large, three decorative medium, three decorative small, three miniature or small balls, one vase of cacti, three large blooms. Moving on from there. Uh, vase of semi cactus medium. Vase of semi cactus small, pom poms, colorettes, three dahlias, any variety, uh, five vases of croissants, 30 pound, 15 and 10, um, three vases of croissants, 20, 15 and 10, and then we have uh, in curve croissants, medium, large intermediates, medium intermediates, large reflex, medium reflex. And exhibition spray. Still more. There's up to 60 classes here for the exhibitors. Vars of flowers for frontal effect. Five blooms of croissants. Uh, perpetual flowering carnations. Vars of three. There's a few carnation classes all the way down. Carnation championship. Again, it's 15, 10 and 5. Carnation championship, 20, 15 and 10. One pot plant flowering. 15 pound, 10 pound and 5 pound. One pot plant foliage, 15, 10, 5. And then the children's section, and we're hoping we get plenty of children in. Uh, we have a miniature garden designer in a seed tree, 25 pound, 15 and 10. And largest sunflower head, 25, 15 and 10. Schools can enter or individuals can enter. Um, anything more from that? Let's see. I think that's it. If you want to share, you'll get in touch or send me an email and I can email back. Right, I'll take the, um, the sort of its holster. We'll go and have a little look. I'll put you on hold. We'll go through and have a look at some of the leeks and onions. Right, uh, this is in the tomato house. This is the, the bottom polytunnel. I have tomatoes in a higher tunnel where they've come very nice and a few in the greenhouse where I've got no shading or anything on. And I'll be honest, the heat has been um, terrible and it's actually cooked some tomatoes while they're still on the plant, especially all the small ones. My wife looks after those and she's really complaining that I haven't shaded properly and uh, we just can't keep on top. They're being watered twice a day. I did put some um, Terra Plus around these plants, the high nitrogen one, and it has boosted them. Where I was complaining before, um, they've actually started to come away quite nicely now. And as you can see, there's some nice quality fruit coming on. Still green, I have a few red ones on the bottom. Now, they were a little bit small on the bottom trusses, but the larger trusses are coming along very nicely, and there seems to be plenty of fruit on. But I will still go up. This is my own seed from Maisie, but I will go back to Medwin and get um, fresh Maisie stock. I do believe they're hybridising now for next year's seed. Right, uh, these are Jimmy Dunnett's Cumbrian. And the Cumbrian's always an early to be set. So I'm just going to show you how to trim. This is a complete seed head with a little bit of grass coming off. Uh, I'm not looking to get seed off these. So we'll take the seed off. Maybe it's a week early, but uh, I don't mind. So we've taken it from a standard seed head like that with a little bit of grass and 
seed on and I've taken it down to that way. I've taken everything off. Um, we'll check again in that in two or three weeks time and I'm quite sure it'll have a grass starting to appear. This was the new seedling that I had uh, producing a little bit small grass but some very large grass which I'm not keen on. I do prefer small grass um, but never mind. I don't want to lose this leak. It's a very good leak so I will be setting some of those. Look around. All the seed heads are coming very nicely now. Uh, I've still got a lot to open. As we can see here, this is a new blanch leak. This is the RMG blanch leak. This head's still to open. This is the standard state of play. There are quite a few heads popping up all over now, um, all the way along. Pot leak on one side, blanch leak on the other. As you can see. And then we move along to look at the onions. These onions that we put in five litre pots have all performed very well. Um, the biggest ones are coming up to about 17 inches around. They're quite nice. A little bit of bot right is showing there. I need to get the spray on here. Uh, actually, that one actually I can scrap because it's actually ran to seed early. Uh, that's the only one in here that has. But they've made very nice onions. And it's been difficult to keep them on top of the watering in these small pots. So I have flooded the um, little trays underneath with water. If that's not soaked up by 10 o'clock, um, I will tip those out. Just enough to give the plants a drink. A few leaks that we've put in just for stock. Right, we'll take a look at the onion heads. Come on, dog. The onion heads are doing very well now. Uh, as you can see, these were the first two we looked at last time. They had loads of pollen on, but they're now starting to produce little pods of seed. Moving along, we can see some of them are actually producing their seed pods now. They're starting to fill out. And there are some really nice heads popping through here. As you can see, there are these are filling out with full of seed. The bees are doing their job. Uh, we're getting plenty of hoverflies in, plenty of bees in from the hives. So they're all looking good. You can hear the bees hovering around uh, just above us here. So that's the state of play there. I'll move through and we'll take a look at the one or two blanch leaks. Right, these are the blanch leaks. Uh, they haven't been unwrapped for a while. I have unwrapped the one along here. As we can see here, uh, just to show you this morning, I haven't removed any flags yet. There's one just starting to slowly disintegrate there. And as you can see, this one, it is one of the older ones. I don't want to take it off as yet. It hasn't split or anything. Uh, so you can see, basically, that's the way the onions are. Yeah, sorry, the blanch leaks are. Uh, they're around about maybe it's nine inches i haven't got a tape measure handy but they'll be approaching nine inches around and they're on the, the 14 inch mark uh, i'm not going to get much extra length on them maybe just an inch or so but that's about the state of play with the blanche i've uh, been spraying regular and they have come clean so they're okay onions these are the late set onions and they're coming very nicely this one's now over 20 inches they're all starting to pop on quite nicely there's some nice shaped bulbs these are a bit smaller this one's on 18 inches and a nice shaped onion they need to clean down again still producing centers they're still growing quite well quite happy moving along was, that's a really big one but it's starting to, it's nice and solid i have given these a feed of um the <clears throat> terra plus with the pot ash in and it's firmed the bulbs up very nicely. They're starting to harden up nice. A couple of really nice bulbs along here. This is off the early set. There's one going to seed here. It's bent over and it's sent a seed head popping right over here. But this onion here is a really nice onion. This is on 23 inches. Again, still producing centers at the moment. And this one's on 24 inches. It's a beautiful onion. Lovely shape. And small centers popping out. I don't know they're going to put much more on now, I'll be honest. Um, but as I say, I had to cut the, um, the holes bigger. These are around the barrels. But that particular onion we have measured, and it is 24 inches. Right, we'll move through with the pot leaks. Before we move inside the pot leaks, there are two casualties I've taken out this morning. Um, I've had quite a few phone calls in the last week. 
as soon as you'll recognize this as soon as you walk into your polytunnel there there could be an absolute stink of rotten leak or cook leak uh, this hot humid weather that we're getting is uh, crucial to plants you need to keep them shaded and well ventilated and these ones have succumbed to it basically this rots in the center it's in the very early stages the whole center absolutely goes to mush it absolutely stinks and the center will just pull out so i've dug these out they will be going straight into the um, waste bin uh, they're not going to be uh, left in my garden uh, if i had was allowed a fire they would have been burnt right um i've pulled most of the gsn out but this particular one i've left basically just to show you the gsn is the parent of everything that's in that trench i took seed from it and it's a very good makes a great parent um it has won at national level on a couple of occasions. Uh, it's only been out four years. Uh, it's not the easiest leak to grow, and it's not a one I would probably recommend people to try. Uh, certainly novices seem to do better than the, you know, well-prepared gardener who've got lots of fertilizers in their bed. It does split. This particular plant's on 15 inches. I haven't uh, wrapped it. I've just had soil banked around the bottom. But you can see it has a tremendous framework on it, really big wide flags and really big long foliage right down to the ground. It's a very, very powerful leak, and it's great for using it as a parent. And that's the only reason I've left this one in. It will be taking a seed. Uh, I'll not take grass from it, but I am going to take seed from it, and uh, I'll have to decide what I'm going to try and cross it with uh, straight ahead. Here we have a new piece of kit that I've just recently bought. It's an electric sprayer. I will show you how it works before we leave this particular tunnel. It'll be the last thing I do, though. Um, it's electric, I've got everything plugged in ready uh, It does hold a gallon of uh, whatever you put into it with the mixture And it gives tremendous coverage and it vaporises, so it's really good Right, I mentioned the stem philium This is a Betty Black, it hasn't been cleaned down, it's just been left uh, It's quite a reasonable plant, it's uh, approaching 15 inches around It's got a very big framework on it And as we see on the tip here, this is think this is stem philium uh, it could be a little bit of chemical burn but you can see it is where are we there so it could be chemical burn because it's on the same side of each flag and as that's grown out it's probably pushed the flag up but on the betty black we tend to get this silver streaking coming in now so again it's not my favorite leak but uh, moving along we'll take a look further along the row Right, here we have DN2. Um, these were looking great two weeks ago. Big leaks, uh, 16, 17 inches around. And they did look very good. Good framework to them. But I have lost three out of these beds. And they're starting to split now. So the bigger leaks, you see them splitting. The bigger leaks where we were um, feeling quite good about them, we're now not feeling so good about them. So you certainly don't want to push your leaks on too big initially just let them tick away so that's the dn2 we'll move over this is my new seedling from the gsn which is at the end of the bed as you can see we've got the wraps on there black wraps these will remain on as any foliage dies then i will remove it um we've actually looked at a couple here this is just to show you it's a, a beautiful leak and i've seen some tremendous leaks in other people's gardens these are around the 14 inch mark and i'm very happy with that just making nice length they're not too long at the moment they're sat four and a half inches they'll make the six inches no problem and it is a nice straight barrel leak just starting a blanch i've just taken the wrap off in the little tire there just to show you um there's another couple here this one looking good and another one again they're looking very good a lovely straight barrel beautiful finish on the bottom it's perfectly round a very nice leak so hopefully these will be leaks for the future. I move across them to other beds. These are the DN1, and this one definitely had stem philium. There's a little bit there, and there's a little bit down there, as you can see. I have sprayed these, I've sprayed them with Ami Star, and we'll see what happens. But they're looking good, and they have their wraps on. I haven't um, removed any of the wraps since I put them on. One thing I will say, um, We've got some black corded elasticated wrap, uh, ties anyway, to tie them because initially I put um, wire cable ties on 
well not cable tie but the wire that we tie the tomatoes up with and within a week they actually marked the plants because the plant continued to grow and there was no elasticity in the the wire that i used so they are dn1s another way of blanching up uh, these are cumbrian these are the virus free and i have just banked soil up on these these were short so what i've actually done see if i can find the one where i can see you can see they're just um there's the one we can see uh, what i've done i've actually it's called socking we just cut the foliage i've cut two of the leaves off there and bring the soil right up to the barrel of the plant to gain length as we can see there moving on to the longer ones i've actually just got the wraps around them uh, these are looking good these are anywhere from 14 inches around maybe it's one or two up to 15 inches but uh, they're looking quite nice they do have a little bit of thrip damage on them uh, now you've got to decide normally i wouldn't want to show them with thrip damage on i wouldn't take them to a show but this year uh, a lot of people have got problems with thrips and i think we'll see a fair few on the bench uh, some of the lads who are concentrating more just on the leeks and growing everything uh, they've managed to keep their plants nice and clean but uh, i am happy with these apart from the marks which we have on them but as you can see this is the virus free cumbrian and they're looking very nice still nice and fresh they're still pushing lovely centers out so hopefully these will be okay for six or seven weeks time turn this around right thank you folks uh just about breakfast time uh oh i will show you the spray i'll put the spray on and um we'll take a look just to show you it's much better than using the pump spray the normal ones that we use just bring it to this end it's a type of spray which we can um just stand at the end of the trench I'll turn the camera back around. Right, I'm just stand it here. I'll just switch it on for a couple of seconds and we'll take a look at the plant. This is the, the spray. See that? I'm just going to take a look at that plant and show you the coverage that we've had. Excellent. Top and bottom. See, it's all shiny there. That's the spray that's on it. Um, it literally, I sprayed this entire tunnel right the way across, and I only used a half a gallon of spray. It used to take me two gallons of spray. So these are going to be excellent if anyone's got electricity in the garden. All you need is an extension cable, and uh, they're pretty. They are very good. They don't over spray. It doesn't come to the runoff point where the, the you know it's running down on the barrel of the plant and marking your plant. So I think this is the way forward. Uh, we do need this type of spray. There are several, you can get smaller ones on the, the market, but if you've got a large place, uh, you need one of these. It's really good. Thank you, ladies and gents. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.